All right, we are back with one more bonus video because on our way out of the Haken and Leprous concert, my brother over here was like, yo, you gotta check out an album that's gonna be dropping soon. So we're gonna be looking at one more album. What is it? It is Holy Hell by Architects. Yep. Now, if you don't know who the Architects are, or Architects, I guess I don't have a the, is a British metalcore band from Brighton, East Sussex, England. Their members include Dan Surley on drums and programming, Alex Dean on bass, Sam Carter on vocals, Adam Christensen on rhythm guitar, and Josh Milton on lead guitar who and vocals. Who is of Sidelosis fam, another really awesome band you guys should check out. Their previous albums include Nightmares 2006, Ruin in 2007, Hollow Crown in 2009, the Here and Now in 2011, Daybreaker in 2012, Lost Forever, Lost Together in 2014, and All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us in 2016. Now I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know shit about this band. My brother was just like, yo, you need to, just need to check this out. So I'm going to hand this off to my brother for a minute to tell me more about the background of this album as well as your background with this band. My background with this band started with Lost Together, Lost Forever in 2014. This band is one of the metalcore giants in the world right now. They do metalcore, but I do it right. Sam Carter is an incredible vocalist. By the time he screams, it sounds like he's shredding his throat. Tragedy struck this band in 2016 with the passing of one of the founding members, Tom Searle, who was also their primary songwriter and guitarist. And this band, it, it took a lot out of them. At least one song called Doomsday. That was a track that was left over from one of Tom's projects he was working on. And when they released this one, they said they weren't sure they were going to carry on as a band anymore because of the immense loss and immense pain. Um, they played a sold-out show one-off in England, and there was 10,000 people. And that's when they decided at, the, at that show to continue on as a band. And now we are here with Holy Hell, a very anticipated album in the metal community because people want to see where they're going to go from here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, would you say it lives up to the name, like, holy hell, this is incredible? Yeah. Spoiler alert, I'm going to say this right now at the beginning of the video. Uh, it's my album of the year. It is a whirlwind album. I will say it's not for everybody. It's a very tough album to get into because it does deal with a lot of heavy subject matter. You really feel the pain, the sorrow, the torment this band has gone through over the last two years. And it comes out in the music, and that's you can't fake something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I I agree that there's a lot of emotion in this album, and again, I, I've never been on this band, so I don't know everything else in comparison. I don't know the writing and how it affects here. I will say there's a lot of really solid songs, at least to me, pure after being one of them. I, I really like the harmonies on there, especially when they break away from the instrumentation and just have that. I also love Mortal After All. It has some of the best lyrics, at least to me, on the album. One part being this this chorus line, which is another part of the symphony lost between eternity, but God is in the details. I know there's a part of me doomed to face infinity. It's this idea of you've lost somebody and yes, God might be in the details, but I don't know if it's necessarily an idea of a religious idea or kind of a slap at the idea of God and being like, you know, we are all going to die one day, but there is still infinite ideas out there. Or, you know, we are just a part of infinity. And, uh, you know, or even just idea of you have lost somebody and now you have to live the rest of your life without this person. Those are some very deep ideas. Carter sounds fantastic on this song, just screaming those lines. It feels like there's a lot of pain and a lot of emotion on a lot of these songs. Royal Beggars also. Which is my favorite track on it the album. It has a beautiful melody line. That chorus, I dare anyone when that chorus kicks in to not want to scream along with him. Mm. Doomsday, another one of these, like, like my brother said, it's another one of these very powerful songs. Uh, there's a lot of power on here. The one thing that I have a little bit of a hard time getting into is just, it, to me... There is, there's a lot of high emotions, but never like, it never feels too open in, in like the, in the somberness where, where I mean like, it's very high of emotions and it's only until like a wasted hymn where it like, it dies down a little bit, at least to well, me. Well, this is architect style. They're a very aggressive, in your face, heavy, unrelenting band, but this album isn't about, it's about their 
way of grieving and dealing, and this is the emotions they felt. Mm -hmm. So I understand it being a very emotionally charged, and like I said, it's a hard album to get into because it's unrelenting. You're gonna walk away with this album feeling different. You're gonna you're gonna feel something mm -hmm. listening to this album. It's not an easy listen. I definitely didn't feel like this was a very jaunty album to listen to. There's a lot of draining ideas on here. It's talking about death in, in, in a very very hard way. It's a very uh, open way too. Yeah. And I guess here's a question for you because I didn't get to talk with you about mm -hmm. this album but you're saying that this is your favorite album of the year. Yes. Now, River, Riverside also put out an album dealing with death. Which I've heard is outstanding. So my question is why do you think that this way of dealing with <laughs> like why is this your number one and not Riverside? Base, I mean, twofold. One, I have a deeper relationship with Architects than I do with Riverside. I'll just be completely honest. When I heard of Tom's passing, I was pretty sad. It, it hurt me. Mm -hmm. Just as a fan, watching one of my favorite bands go through a lot of crap. And two, I feel like it's not to say it's neither way of dealing is, is different or, or bad. It's just this way of dealing is more visceral and I think it strikes a chord with a lot more people because, yes, you feel sad, but you also feel a lot of anger and that's what this album is it's an angry album i i completely agree with that there's a lot of just anger and maybe that's just maybe why i don't like it as much i'm not saying that it's bad i just think the there the emotional range isn't as open as say the riverside album i think with riverside there's a lot of anger but there's also a lot of times of emotional you know just longing and waiting like there was even a song talking about like wanting to like end your life in Riverside, where it's talking about, you know, just bring me to the edge so that I can, you know, because I don't know if I can keep going on with this. I'm going to pretend that I can, but I don't know if I can. Now, I understand that at least with this album, there's a little bit more hinting at some of the previous lyrics. Yes, right? there's, there's um, some throwbacks from Tom, the original songs, like in the song Damnation. They take a line that was in Gone with the Wind, which was, I remember when you said to me, my friend, hope is a prison, and they reprise it in Damnation with, well, if hope is a prison, then maybe faith can set me free. All right, mm -hmm. one more quick thing. So uh, one thing that we didn't get to touch on that we really wanted to really quickly is the last song on the album, A Wasted Hymn. When, when I was talking about earlier that this, a lot of this, album has the same type of emotional resonance of just really hard hitting in your face this is one that's a little bit different and it's a great ender because of just being able to bring it down a little bit and giving the room for some really really poignant lyrics so the lyrics that are really stand out to me in this song is is as follows it goes can you feel the empty space can you feel the fire at the gates can you live a life worth dying for and they're talking about how much Tom accomplished in his life in a short time on this earth. That he lived a life that was worth dying for. And, he's, and it's asking you, do you feel like you can live a life worth dying for at the end of this album? It's a hopeful kind of poignant message to really makes you look in, at yourself in the mirror and be like, am I living a life worth dying for? Is it something that I'm happy about? It's a, re it's, it's a really poignant way to end the album. It, it is, but I could also weirdly see it a different way you know going through so much pain on this album it's also probably you know bringing up ideas of wanting to live or not you know and the idea of this idea of having to live on with everything else going on with you know knowing that one day you will either lose other people around you and you'll be the only one there or you will die and everyone else will have to live without you you know li living that constant battle of wanting to having to keep on going knowing that one day you will die it's a very open message and you know want to you know think about and i think it's a little bit of both this positive momentum of you know you gotta live the life that you want to live in order to be able to know that you it's worth dying for one day but also knowing that it's totally fine to struggle through through these feelings because everyone does now as m me who have i've not been into most of the metalcore scene either i know only a few and m the ones i do know my brother would probably spit at me like why the hell are you talking about these ones but i guess my question is you're saying that they're the a giant in the metalcore scene. Oh yeah, they're they are the torchbearers for so, the genre. So my question is, 
for someone who's trying to get into metalcore or someone who knows certain bands like i mean you gotta say we came as romans we can say of uh, mice and men mm -hmm. like what sets this band apart from first from, off their and, their lyrics are way deeper than any of those bands stuff us so they they tackle ideas and stuff like this album a lot of metalcore bands don't write albums like this they don't write this thought-provoking lyrics that make you really sit and think about things they have a very unique sound compared to a lot of other metalcore and they do it extremely well and the big thing i think that separates this band from every other metalcore band is sam carter he is by far and away the best metalcore vocalist and one of the top i'd say five metal vocalists out there because what he's able to do is yes he's able to hit these really throat shredding registers but when he also needs to sing melodically, he can do it, and he can also scream melodically, which is a really hard skill to develop. I would say, if you, you know, actually going back to something from our previous album um, album review, this guy has a tinge of periphery in there. I, I, when I hear him, my first thought was the periphery lead vocalist, in terms of just like how he, he can hit a lot of stuff in his higher register so well. But it's also a little bit, thin as well is it doesn't have that darkness of like like a more deeper voice where you can hit high and it's also deep it's a little bit more like my brother said it, it when he's screaming it feels like he's literally going to tear something when he's screaming it's incredible and it's same thing with his singing it feels like it doesn't feel strained but it feels like just on that edge before it does become strained and i think that also adds a texture to this album which I really like. I can see that. The idea of screaming and your singing. Your heart out. Yeah, yeah, screaming your heart out. Screaming all the pain, all the sorrow out. I, I, I agree. And again, I enjoyed my first listen. As I listened to the second time, I picked up more. And I definitely want to listen to a couple more times because I definitely see, like, this would be an album that would register with me. I, I would totally understand that. I guess in terms of, if I know it's your number one album of the year, but... Are there any negatives? I can only think of a couple. First off, Modern Misery is, I think, the weakest track on the album, and it's it's definitely kind of a paint-by-numbers architect song. It could have been flushed out a little better. It definitely is very heavy, but I wouldn't say I would skip it on the album, but it's definitely not when I get to that song, I'm like, all right, let's just power through this one to get to the rest of the album. Because there's only one bad song, and that's... I wouldn't even say it's a bad song. It's a, it's a decent song. And two, I feel like some of the breakdowns are a little paint by numbers but when it's done so well i don't really mind it that all that much those are probably the only two negatives on this album i can really think of because josh milton adds a really awesome dynamic to this band and again rest in peace tom we all miss you but i think josh's influence on this album is really showing through in terms of his guitar play does this make it your favorite architects album yes it is my favorite architects album mm -hmm. so i'm i mean I don't think I even have to guess what your number is for this, but... Since I really, I'm not the huge fan of Modern Misery, it's not a perfect album, but I would probably give it a 9.75 out of 10. Alright. I, for the first couple of times I've listened to it, and bear in mind, I'm this might change when I listen to it more, and I get a better idea of what this band is, and, you know, may, come December, come January, when I do my top 50 albums, this might make into my top... 15 albums you know top 20 as of right now it's a very solid album i would give it a 7 out of 10 to me it's kind of hard to listen to this album and not hear other albums or other metalcore ideas that i've heard before it's like this is good but i've heard this before but i know the emotions there i, I can hear it in sam carter's voice i can hear the the energy if only if only there was a little bit a little bit of difference in in some of these these feels where it's not just every single time you are hitting you're you know hitting you on the head with just anger and pain and i get it they're going through a lot but i think riverside did this idea a little bit better this year it Better is not a great word. More Di diverse. Differently. Diverse, Differently, yeah, yeah. Diverse. So, at least for me right now, in comparison to the two, I would put the Riverside album above this one. Now, if I listen to it more, is there a chance that I like this even more? Yeah, I definitely, I, I see a lot of potential in there. But 
as of right now, it's a solid 7 out of 10. I'm happy that you introduced me to it. Yeah, and they're, they're great. If you haven't checked them out, please do. Maybe I wouldn't start with Holy Hell because, like I said, it is a very tough lesson. Go back to their older stuff. It's, it's just as heavy, but the emotion is not all sadness and anger. There's definitely a lot more... I don't know if the word hopefulness is the right word. It's just it's 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 just heavy, but there's not a lot of real tough emotions attached to it. So you might have an easier time getting into those records. Hmm. So that is our time, though. And thank you again so much for watching. Thank you, of course, for taking some time out. Thank you. If there's uh, some other albums that you would like us to review in terms of the metal scene, uh, definitely let us know. Or even if you want this guy on f board for when I get to my top ten albums of the year, maybe he could. Uh, bring his knowledge into there as well but until then you know if you like this video if you like this this album let me know what you like or hate about it share this with your friends subscribe to my channel and just keep on watching and i will be back with another video shortly but until then we are signing out